مش هزخ بلا هيتاي يشو مزرب باتاي تنسي ما باتاي مني تسكشو يرس بازا غلطاي It took me about 10 years from beginning to end. I used a 5D Mark II, a DSLR, and later on, I also used a C301 and a 5D Mark IV. For about eight years, it was just me. For two of my trips, I was able to find someone to help me with the sound. But the first cut was about three and a half hours. We had at least about 20 cuts, at least. You could have made a documentary that's, you know, just about how the chat industry works. And instead, it's this, you know, dreamlike meditative narrative that kind of weaves the, the, the fables, the, the legends, the history of this plant in, in a very innovative way. One of the things that I felt from from the beginning is that I really wanted to contextualize the plant, historical, social, and mythical context to what this plant is. You know, a lot of the times our mythology, the fantasies that we have say so much about us as human beings. Those mythologies were actually in conversation with the present, especially we're talking about the imam who had to go in search of the water for eternal life. And, and today, what are those waters that we're talking about? It's almost like a dream when a lot of people are thinking of going across the oceans in the Red Sea or the Mediterranean. And so there was so many things that were connected that I wanted to, to bring in, in, into the film that um, it, it ended up becoming, you know, perhaps just a dream, you know? I love Tell me about, you know, how you found the layers to this conversation and what you wanted to ultimately say uh, with this piece. You know, it, it took 10 years to make this film, right? So over the years, um, I uh, listened. I listened to people. I have to say this film was pretty much a collaboration, you know, with with the communities that um, who trusted me. And, and it was a community led uh, a film in a way, because what you see is the f- in the film is what the community offered, what the community wanted to say. And for me, the layers that you see give a, a more of a complete picture of, of what this chat is, you know? It's not just a, a plant that people get addicted you know, to. It has so much more meaning. Obviously, there is a reason why it's so, it's, it's so important today. But when it comes to the commodification of, of this, um, it was very important for me to also um, bring in the, the political atmosphere that people were living and how that also affected how this plant became commodified in the first place. The social and political challenges that the Oromo uh, people uh, were going through. Well, let's talk about your instinct to film this in this beautiful black and white cinematography. What was it about, you know, that look that you felt like would capture what you were aiming to with this project? There are many, many reasons. Um, From the beginning, I knew this was going to be, you know, in black and white. I was looking to focus into the interiority of the people that I was having a relationship with, you know, they were very, you know, intimate sharings that uh, they, they were offering to me. And I felt that these interiors were best resonate in the black and white environment. The colors of Hara are explosive. It, it is, I swear, they're explosive and it's not an, an exaggeration, but that was not the story, you know? So I felt that the black and white, you know, really helped me to focus it into the texture of the film, into the shadows of the film, which I felt were part of the storytelling in the film. 
This film does seem to center and and kind of follow just as much as it does uh, chats. The young man, Muhammad, this young boy, kind of this coming of age story. How did you decide to follow him, one, but also how you would go about uh, telling his story and weaving his story into uh, this narrative? Muhammad is um, one of the kids that I met when he was... 12 years old. In the film, he is 14. Now he is 16. So I met him when he was very, very young. And he was usually every time I'm there and I'm shooting, I'm always surrounded by kids. You know, kids are are, are curious. They want to know what you're shooting. They want to know if they can be part of it. Uh, you know, so Muhammad was one of them. And then we became close because uh, Muhammad's mom uh, was not present in his life, you know, and then he had a very challenging relationship with his father as well. So he was one of those kids that always remained close to me. But most importantly, I feel like um, a lot of the stories of people were truly manifested in Muhammad, because what you see in Muhammad is a lot of this this youth making very um, hard decisions to go alone in these treacherous journeys, you know, towards the seas. So that is what Muhammad represents in in, in the film. Yeah. How would you describe your filmmaking style on this project? You know, how did you determine where to essentially focus your lens? So that comes precisely from those teachings of the Amirs, the Sufi Amirs. Yeah, because I was going every year to Ethiopia. And so and I was going for a short period of time. So at the beginning, I would go and I would just be rushing like very New York style, you know, like, oh, you got to get this done. And, you know, you're like, oh, you know, you already have your schedule and everything's tight and all of that. And the imams saw me and they literally had like a, a nice intervention right away because they, <laughs> they, they call me and, you know, we sat down in one of those places that you see in the film and they're like, well, you know, we need to talk to you. We, we just, you know, we don't think that what you're doing is really going to help you. You are missing out on every single thing because you're coming with an idea and you're coming with a preconceived something. And also you're hurrying. Um, when you come here, you have to leave your notion of time at the door. And understand this time because this place has its own time and the way it operates is different and so by doing that basically what they were doing is truly empowering me with your instinct allow this place to guide you because you will be if you give yourself into it and that to me translates as intuition an instinct, you know? So they trained me well for that. Yeah. 